Hello friends, in this session we are going to see about uh, chemical energy storage system. Along with uh, this we are going to see about 3D solar cells. First of all, uh, considering the chemical energy storage system, in this we are going to see about uh, hydrogen fuel cells alone. See normal chemical storage system uh, stores energy in the form of chemical uh, which are in the form of gases, liquid or solid and they can release energy through any chemical reaction process. Uh, coming to the hydrogen fuel cell, this is the diagram of a hydrogen fuel cell. If you see here, hydrogen is taken uh, as an, an input to this device. The oxygen is combined with hydrogen, it gives the H2O, which gives water as the output. During this chemical reaction, suitable amount of energy is generated outside and this is being regulated with the help of the charge controllers and it is stored in a conventional battery and it is given to the external load. Hydrogen is a clean fuel. Uh, that when consumed in a fuel cell it produces only water. See this hydrogen can be produced from variety of domestic resources as we already know as natural gas, nuclear power, biomass or renewable power like solar and wind. These qualities make it more attractive uh, for an alternative energy generation which is also mainly suitable for uh, transportation and uh, normal electrical generation application. The, some of the domestic applications are it may be used in electrical vehicles, in uh, household applications and portable power devices. This chemical rea reaction as uh, shown in this diagram uh, are by the redox reaction where you will be having oxidation and reduction which is called as the uh, redox reaction. See fuel cells are different from the conventional batteries because it requires continuous source of fuel and oxygen to sustain in a chemical reaction. But in a conventional battery, we will be having chemical reaction usually coming from the metals uh, and uh, their ions uh, that are commonly present in the battery. But in the case of fuel cells, we require the fuel and the oxygen continuously. Also, uh, the fuel cells can be produce, can produce electricity continuously as long as the uh, fuel and the oxygen are supplied. Even though the production is going to be complicated, but the energy density of uh, hydrogen fuel cell will be around 120 megajoules per kilogram which is uh, three times more greater than the energy produced from a diesel or gasoline. See in terms of electrical, the energy density of the hydrogen is around 33.6 kilowatt uh, hour. Uh, in turn, in, in the case of diesel, it will be only 12 to 14 kilowatt hour per kg. This is about the introduction of uh, hydrogen fuel cell. Uh, see, if you look at the plot given at the right hand side, so here you will be having the specific uh, power and we, we are having the specific energy in the y axis. The most of the commonly used energy storage systems are given here. See, mainly, uh, see here in fuel cells, the specific energy is low when compared to other, other type of energy storages. Also, if you see here, uh, the combustion engine gas turbine has both specific power as well as specific energy. Um, because of this uh, reason, uh, mostly we are using these type of uh, uh, engines or gas turbines to produce energy or to store energy. Since we are going to uh, other type of energy storage systems, uh, at present we are not considering about this. Uh, let us see uh, other type of energy storage systems. Uh, here we will be having normal electrolytic capacitors where the specific power is going to be very high but the specific energy is uh, less when compared to the uh, other type of systems. Also uh, here uh, we have uh, super capacitors uh, which, is, which is more reasonable. Also uh, we have a flywheel uh, which can be which is economical when they are used in a uh, large scale. If you see lead acid batteries are commonly used since uh, they are uh, specific power is slightly less but they can produce specific energy. Then uh, then we move on to liquid cadmium batteries uh, because of the improvement in technology we move to liquid cadmium batteries. When compared to lead acid as well as liquid cadmium uh, we have uh, uh, lithium ion batteries. Uh, if you see here it can give it can give uh, a specific power. Also, it can give reasonable specific energy. So, in most of the uh, 
applications nowadays for energy storage systems we prefer lithium ion batteries this is the uh, only reason we are preferring lithium ion batteries otherwise we will go for flywheel uh, flywheel mechanism since flywheel mechanism is more complicated uh, in construction also um, uh, it is uh, more costlier uh, when it is done in a uh, lower scale so uh, we are using lithium ion batteries now we are going to see about solar based renewable energy system uh, the main thing is uh, we are going to see about 3d cells so here the three dimensional solar cells uh, uh, mainly capture most of the light that is incidented on them and uh, it could boost the conventional photovoltaic uh, panel efficiency by with uh, the same the reduced size weight and mechanical complexity uh, if you see it will be in the form of a tower like structure where uh, solar pa panels are arranged in such a way that most of the lights are uh, falling on them so that the efficiency may get increased mainly these type of cells are uh, uh, find their applications um, by powering the spacecraft also further this efficiency can be increased by giving a a photovoltaic coating material over them uh, they can be used for for a very broad range of applications uh, the research is actually sponsored by air force office of scientific research but uh, uh, still now it has not been implemented because uh, the pattern is actually currently pending if you see the right hand side we have the actual structure of a 3d cell we have a glass plate as we already know about the conventional uh, solar uh, system we have a glass plate and we have uh, n type material and p type material when the solar uh, cells when the photons hit the solar panel um, there is a uh, detach of electrons there is a flow of electrons uh, from the plate uh, when they are connected uh, to the external load uh, they can power them see this is taken as the load from the solar panel so here this is the actual structure that has been developed uh, can mainly capture most of the sunlight that is incident on them uh, even though uh, it does not require the sun must be at the top of the solar panel as in the conventional panel as the sun travels from east to west uh, it can extract power um, at any direction this is the cross section view of the 3d solar cell the tower structure can trap and absorb light receiving from various different angles as we shown here so uh, this could allow the uh, spacecraft uh, without any mechanical uh, system uh, to track the sun uh, normally we will use uh, solar sun tracking system so we never required any mechanical system to track the sun uh, with in this setup so this uh, may improve reliability but uh, also it reduces weight and complexity of the system in a 3d cell uh, we have a carbon nanotube arrays which serves uh, both the support as well as it can serve as a conductor connecting the photovoltaic material to the silicon wafer but the researchers are now uh, trying to uh, make trying to make this photovoltaic uh, cell uh, with the help of cadmium since we are uh, familiar with the cadmium already and in battery technologies so they are going to they are working on the cadmium material however uh, a broad range of uh, materials can be used to increase the uh, performance of the system uh, so in near future uh, this type of cell arrangements uh, could replace the existing uh, solar panel structure See the fabrication of this is begin with uh, silicon wafer which can also uh, serves the uh, bottom junction of a solar panel. Researchers first coat this silicon wafer with a thin layer of iron using a photolithographic process. This is a photolithographic process where, uh, where the wide variety of patterns are created. Then these patterns are uh, uh, placed in a furnace which is heated up to 780 degree centigrade later hydrocarbon gases are then um, passed into the furnace where uh, where the carbon and hydrogen are separated this process is known as chemical vapor uh, deposition so the carbon grows array of multi vapor carbon nanotubes on the top of the iron pattern this is how they are uh, producing this if you see here uh, in the in recent years they are uh, 
implementing this type of uh, 3D cells in the uh, structural buildings so that we can get uh, maximum amount of power generated uh, from the solar cell. Thank you. We will see in the next session.